Okay, we're going to start with a simple one. I want to find the square root of the complex number 2i. Now this one's quite easy to do geometrically, so let's just plot that on the complex number plane. 2i is going to be here, and we want to find the square root of that number 2i. Now, geometrically, that's going to be the square root of the modulus. So it'll be, if that's 2, it'll be down here at uh, 1.4, but it's going to be half the argument. The argument is pi on 2, so we're going to be out here at a length of root 2, since that's 2 up to there, and we're going to have an argument of pi on 4, because that's half the argument of the original number, 2i. So I can then quite quickly write that down in mod arg form, and I'll do that now. Root 2 cos pi on 4 plus i sine pi on 4, which is root 2 times 1 on root 2 plus i times 1 on root 2, which is just 1 plus i. Now we know that there's actually two ways you can get um, a number that when you double its argument, it'll end up with an argument of pi on 2. The first one is here, and the other one is at 180 degrees around from there with the same modulus of root 2. So that point there also will satisfy the conditions that we're after. So once again, we're saying that this argument here, right, which is pi on 2 plus pi on 4, if you double it, pi on 4 plus pi on 2, you'll end up round at the number that you want, which is 2i. So there's actually two numbers who, if you double their argument, you end up with uh, 2i. So 1 plus i is one of the roots, and also over here at 180 degrees to it is minus 1 and minus i. So there's my two square roots of 2i geometrically. But we could do this algebraically, so I want to have a look at that as well. I want to find some uh, complex number x plus i y, which is the square root of 2i. So that means if I square that, I will end up with my 2i. Now, we've expanded these enough before to know that that's x squared minus y squared for the real part, and 2xyi for the imaginary part, and 2i is just 0 plus 2i. There's no real part, 2i is the imaginary part there. So we know the rule that says if two complex numbers are equal, then their real parts are equal and their imaginary parts are equal. So we can equate the real parts and equate the imaginary parts, and we get a pair of simultaneous equations. We have x squared minus y squared equaling 0, and we have 2xy equaling 2. Now, I've discussed in a previous video that there's a little trick where you can find x squared plus y squared in this situation very quickly. So x squared plus y squared is just the modulus of, of the complex number that we had. It's just the square root of 0 squared plus 2 squared, because that's how you find the modulus. Now, I could have just looked at my diagram. I could have just considered it pretty quickly. But there's a long way to get it if you need to. The square root of 0 squared plus 2 squared. What's that? The square root of 4 is 2. So I'm going to just to save room, pop a 2 in there. Why is that good? Because uh, you can add these two equations, equation 1 and equation 2, and get 2x squared equaling 2, so x squared equals 1, and x equals 1 or minus 1. You can subtract maybe 
this one, the blue one, take off the black one. You'll get x squared minus x squared, cancel. y squared minus minus y squared is y squared plus y squared. So you get two y squareds equaling two. So y squared equals one and y equals one or minus one. But I've got these mixed up a bit and I need to consider how I'm going to combine the x's and the y's in my final answer and there's a couple of ways I can think about that. I mean here, these x and the y is times in together to give a positive. So I can see from my 2xy, I can see what my answer should be. They're either both positive or both negative in order for that to be a positive answer. So that tells me that it's the one and the, the one, the positives, or both the negatives. Of course, I could consider it geometrically, and if I'm in this quadrant for one of them, then both the x and y parts are positive. And then, of course, the other square root will be at 180 degrees to it, so they'll both be negative. But either way, I'll get my one plus i and my minus one and minus one i in the same situation. So you can solve them geometrically, or you can solve it algebraically. It's a simple one. We'll move on in the next video to a more difficult one.